And a big welcome in, softball fans. Bevel State softball is up today here from Summerton, Alabama, where the Bevel State Bears are taking on the number two ranked team in the nation in the Wallace State Lions. Already up to bat. Felicity Frame for Wallace State. She is facing the Oakman Wildcat, Caitlin Magison Bass. Sebastian Black joining me, and this is Brian Hale. It's already a 3-0 count. Bass, uh, this is quite a test that the, Lions, uh, that the Bears are facing today with the Lions, uh, number two in the nation. Uh, they're 22-0. They certainly are, and it's, it's hard to play an undefeated team here. Yeah. And uh, Frame, who is up to bat right now, is number one in the conference at ERA at 563. That's pretty tough there is. Looks like that's going to be a ball, so she mm -hmm. gets walked to first base here, Brian. So Makinson starts off with a walk. And coming up to bat now is going to be Harper Niblett. She is number four in the conference with a 491 batting average, so it doesn't get any easier. So first pitch to Makemson from Makemson is a strike. Wallace trounce Central Alabama nine to nothing and six to one on Saturday to sweep the series. Of course they've swept everybody at twenty two and nothing. And Frame with the stolen base advances to second. No outs here. The count is one and one. One and one pitch. And that is outside. And they're gonna call that two and one. Next pitch, and down in the zone. Three and one. Brown, a beautiful day for some bear softball. It certainly is. Uh, we're kind of sandwiched, and that is hit over to shortstop, and it looks like Kirby is going to hold up on the throw, so uh, once again, the Lions are producing and now up to bat that is Liliana Carty she is fifth in the conference with a 491 batting average and she is second in home runs at eight is this uh, effectively what you would call a murderer's row <laughs> yeah, I think it definitely is here Oh, and one, and uh, it, if she would have kept that one straightened up, Bass, that mm -hmm. that could have been flirting with the uh, home run territory. Nevertheless, it's going to be 0 and 2, the count. Certainly, it definitely had the speed and the fire in the ball, but just start right down through the foul line. So make him some with the 0 and 2 pitch, and good lord, Bass, that. <laughs> She is showing why she is number yeah. two on the home run list because that is insane. So another 0-2 pitch and outside on that one. <laughs> I think Makemson said, okay, <laughs> you go chase that one then. A 1-2 and two, and that one's down in the zone now 2-2. Two and two. No outs here, runners on first and second base. Here comes the 2-2. And that one is knocked down the foul line. Coach Daughter said, hey, that, that's fair. No, <laughs> good try, Coach, but uh, <laughs> no go. Bass, we had uh, we were notified of a schedule change. The 
uh, game, the return game at Wallace will be tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. So both of them will be playing up there. And that one's high in the zone, so we've got a full count. We were originally uh, thinking about going uh, and covering that one, uh, game one of that one, as we are this one, but uh, gas prices are kind of telling us no. <laughs> and that one is hit up for a foul ball, and yeah, gas prices are pretty high. I just paid 4.29 down there at the raceway in Jasper. That's it's pretty rough out there. And uh, this is just my Swami hat talking, but it'll get worse before it gets better. <laughs> and this one is knocked way out into center field. Santana Clark's under it with the tag up, and both of the runners advance to second and third respectively, so one out here. I guess it's a little bit of a win there that that one didn't go over the fence. Yeah, for sure. Up to bat now. This is Matty Cartran for the uh, Lions and Bass. Uh, this is uh, yet again bad news as Makemson is 0-1 now. Uh, Cartran is first in the conference in home runs at, ni at 9. Mm. And she sends this to third, and unfortunately on the error, it's going to go in, and the Wallace State Lions are on the board, and now they're going to play a little mind games, and now it's going to be 2-0. and oh. Both Frame and Carty have scored. So 2-0 and oh here, and up to bat, Gracie Benton. And for the first time, we don't have any gaudy stats to talk about here. <laughs> Not too far away, though. She's from Hayden. Not too far at all. Mm -mm. Been up there a couple times up to Hayden. Yeah, it's nice, nice, pretty place up there. Hayden, too. Hayden's pretty nice, too. All yeah. those nice houses they got built out there. It's, it's nice little scenery out there. It is. It very much is. The first pitch and swinging through on that one is Benton. Or an 0 and 1. Second pitch, and she swung through on that one. So Makemson maybe got a little angry after uh, <laughs> after that last one, and uh, is is showing out here. She's way ahead, 0 and 2. So it's got some pitches to play with. Next pitch, and that one's fouled off, so it'll remain 0-2. And, yeah, smart move to me to go ahead and move that to Friday morning uh, at 11 a.m. because on Saturday we're projected to have some uh, some of the white stuff in there. and uh, Yeah, some of that, and I heard the temps are going to be about 20 degrees. Yeah, good move. I don't think anybody <laughs> wants to play in that. Oh, what a shot. That's down into low center field. And in coming is Cartran on the RBI by Benton. And just like that, it's a 3 to nothing lead now. Up to bat now, Sarah Beth Brake. Another one from not too far away. She's from Gardendale. We know about the good program out there. The Gardendale's always a uh, good softball program. So first pitch upcoming. And that one's a little high. They're going to say that's a ball. One out here and runner on first base. Second pitch. That one's high. Once again, it's going to be 2-0. and oh. I was just about to say, Brian, Wallace State's only got one out, so they definitely still have some room to play with here. Oh, yeah. Next pitch, and that one's in for a strike. So two and one the count. Next pitch, and that one's a little outside, three and one. 
Basso, we have some Bama basketball on tonight. We sure do. Bama will be taking on Vandy tonight, 6.30 pregame, 7.30 tip. We will have it live on WJLX as it is strike. Three yep. and two is the count. Full count here, one out. It would be really a it would be a feather in the cap of Makinson to go ahead and get the out. And she does strike out. Yep. So two outs here for the mm -hmm. Lions. And up to bat now is the Summerton Christian Eagle who will be pitching today, Bailey Hall. Last year's Daily Mountain Eagle Elite Player of the Year, and Bailey's going to send this into shallow field, and Clark is underneath it. So the Wallace State Lions plate three runs, up three to nothing here, heading to the bottom of the first inning. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Up to bat first will be Santana Clark, the Carbon Hill Bulldog, facing off one of the area matchups here that we're going to see today against Bailey Hall. Clark Bass is actually moved into that top spot in stolen bases. She is first in the conference with 34. So good news for Santana. Clark's first pitch is 1-0. and o. Yes. Bailey Hall facing her off bass. She's pitched 34 innings with 37 strikeouts, just six walks. And the next pitch, and this is over to shortstop. The throw is in time, so Clark is out. Now, <laughs> listen to this for the Summoning Christian Eagle. She has a .62 ERA, but is only third in the conference. Mm. Her two of her teammates are tied with the top ERA at point three five. Is that not sick? That is. <laughs> that is. That's man. And next up to bat and let's see here. I don't have a twenty five listed on my roster. We'll have to find out who that young lady is uh shortly. But uh up to bat now, and she's going to send this one into shallow right field, and they track it down to the Lions for out number two. Uh, up to bat now, this is Katie Puckett. Brian Bell has definitely got some hitting power. They just can't get it to uh, send off towards way out there in the field. Yeah, they are making contact. Uh, the problem is, is uh, as you mentioned, they're getting it in play. And first pitch to Puckett, that's going to be a strike. So, oh, and one's the count. Bottom of the s first inning here, three to nothing, is the score for the Wallace State Lions over the Bears. And next pitch, and that was absolutely filthy mm. by Bailey Hall. Just a beautiful changeup. So, oh, and two the count here on Puckett. Next pitch. That one's high, one and two. Wanted to see if she was going to chase that one. So, B 
Bailey Hall, next pitch, and that one's going to be down in the zone two and two. She's made two quick outs here, so the pitch count is really irrelevant at this point. Checks her signals, and she deals. And there's the strikeout for Bailey Hall. Number 38 on the year, and we will be right back. Love. And here we are back again. The Wallace State Lions up three to nothing over the Bevel State Bears. Coming up to bat, another one of the Summit in Christian Eagles, Gracie Ashley, coming up to bat to face off against Caitlin Mackinson. Ashley has a 369 batting average. Bass, she has two triples on the season, third in the conference in that. So she's been getting it done for Wallace State. Of course, uh, you know, <laughs> it just contributes, and she'll have another year unless she gets snatched up by Division One. And she is batting straight over to Clark, who's going to get underneath it for the first out. It was a beautiful hit. Just mm -hmm. Bevel State was there to cover up the ball yep. for the first out. Riley Moody is now up to bat for the Lions. Yeah, this is a picture-perfect day. I think temperatures are in the 60s. First shot is sent straight back for a foul. So if we could effectively bottle this mm -hmm. and just keep it for the <laughs> until next fall, it, I would be it, happy, it, but it's, it's not going to happen. It is very nice today. It's yeah. very, very comfortable weather today. In contrast to what we're expecting Saturday. And that one is shot straight up, gathering underneath it. And crawling it in is Borden for the second out. So a lot better showing for the Bears this time out. Up to bat now. This is Frame, who's already scored. And she sends this one off to the left-hand side for a foul. Brian, Top hitter in the conference. Brian, beautiful day for uh, softball here. Make sure to get out and support your local high school teams. I know we got some that's playing uh, right across the field from us today. Yeah, interestingly enough, the pitching duel, Makemson from Oakman and Hall from Summit and Christian. Summit and Christian and Oakman will be playing each other at 4 o'clock. Just about, oh, what about 700 feet away? Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Make him some his next pitch, and that one's in for a strike. One and two the count. And that one's down in the zone. That'll even the count at two and two with two outs here in the second inning. pitch and this one's going to be fouled away. I don't think anybody's going to get to that. They do not. Brian looking at the school board over there that top top row was all filled up with twos. Mm -hmm. We had a uh, February the 22nd 2022 mm -hmm. not too long ago. We did and it's today's Mario Day March the 10th. Yep. 
two and two pitch, and that's sent into left field. And getting on base will be Frame. She's spotless thus far on the game. And here comes Niblet. You go from the first hitter in the conference and batting average to the fourth. Pretty tough. But Maycomson's, at the very least, held them to three, three runs thus far. And the first pitch. And taking off is Frame. And she is in safe with the stolen base. The call was a ball. So the 1 and 0 from Makemson. And that one's going to be high for 2 and 0. They're keeping their eye on frame. They definitely are. Next pitch, and swinging through on that one is Niblet. Good pitch from Makemson. So here's the 3 0, and nailed that one. Did Niblet, and it went off the glove of Puckett. So frame scores and over to third base on the errors is Niblet. So it is four to nothing now. The Lions on top. Now up to bat Car T. Number two in home runs, number five in batting average in the conference. And straight up is this one. And underneath it to corral it in. Good job there for the Bears as it is four to nothing heading into the bottom of the second. We'll be right back. Live. Four to nothing, Wallace State on top of the Bevel State Bears heading to the bottom of the second inning. Hall for Wallace State in, and she will be facing a power hitting Mackenzie Kirby. Ninth in the conference in batting average is the first pitch is fouled off. She has a 456 batting average. She is seventh in doubles with eight. So if there's a chance to get some runners in position, Kirby is uh, a good spot to start with. And second pitch, and this one's going to even the count at one and one. Fast not too far off here. We'll be heading to Oxford, Mississippi to go s cover another summoning Christian Eagle that's playing for the Arkansas Razorbacks. And swing through on that one. One and two the count. Kendall Best Sides is really doing it for the Arkansas Razorbacks. We're going to go over and uh, cover her. Next pitch, and that one's fouled away. Yeah, looking for the opportunity to go see. Uh, never been to a college softball game, so that'll be the first one there. And uh, it's always exciting to go see KB Sides. And I uh, wonder if they've already nicknamed her Speedy over there because mm. she's got some speed. 
Yeah. You could nickname her just about anything as far as her production on the base runners. Uh, road runner, speedy, anything. Yeah. She's been doing it, and uh, we do have a Division One player that will start next year uh, for Curry. Next pitch on this one. This one's fouled away. We're going to Jacksonville State. So uh, we'll have another one in back in Division One. thankfully. we got plenty of area players in the uh, collegiate junior college ranks. They always have nice to have one to brag on in the uh, in the Division One ranks, oh, as yeah. we've had for so many years now. We've had them in the SEC for forever now. Hall's next pitch, and this one's rocketed into center field. Kirby's on base with the stand-up hit, so good job by Kirby. We get on base, and now up to bat, Savannah Neely. And maybe the Bears can get some good offense going now, now that the glass has been finally broken. First pitch from Hall, and that's a swinging strike for Neely. So Owen won the count. Brian, they have zero outs here, so definitely a lot of room to work with. Oh, and a throw over. They tried to get Kirby, and the foul, I mean, excuse me, the ball rolled out of the first baseman's hands. So that's going to be an error on Sarah Beth Brake as Kirby advances to second base. So in scoring position, Bass, a sacrifice here, move her to third or any kind of hit, and we could be in, in business. And Neely cuts at that one. It's going to be a one and two count. Here's the one, two, and swinging through on that one, and nobody's going to move, unfortunately, as Hall records her second strikeout, number 39 on the year. Up to bat now. This is Alex Martin. First pitch to Martin, and that was another one of those filthy change-ups that just drop right there. <laughs> is, that is absolutely nasty pass. It is for sure. The 0-1 and, and swinging through on that one. Oh, almost <laughs> was going to come to me if I didn't have this glass. Yeah. It was spot on. I thought it was going to hit the window for a second here. Pardon me. This is Brentley Champion. My apologies. So the 0-2 to champion, and did she swing through? Yes. Third strikeout of the game for Hall. Now coming up to bat would be Megan Caro. Two outs here, runner on second base. All pitches, and that's going to be high in the zone for a ball. Next pitch, and that's fouled away, so that'll even the count at one and one. And of course, as Bass mentioned, Bama basketball tonight, SEC tournament. Bama SEC tournament against Fandy. And swing through on that one. Did Caro. Second strike here. One and two with two outs. The last time Bama played Vandy not too long ago, they ended up losing to Vandy. So I'm hoping mm. for a different turnout here in the SEC yeah. tournament. Want to advance to as far as you can. Next pitch. And there is Four, strikeout number four for Hall. We are heading to the bottom 
of the second, or excuse me, top of the third. We'll be right back. Top of the third inning here for the Wallace State Lions. They're going to be sending Maddie Carton up to bat to face Caitlin Bacomson. And as we mentioned, that SEC tournament going, of course, the big dog being the Auburn Tigers. Would love to see a, a SEC tournament final Iron Bowl style, Alabama <laughs> Auburn. Wouldn't you love it? Oh yeah, for sure. First pitch from Makinson. Cartron is going to be outside for a ball. One and zero the count. And the next pitch, and that's going to be a low for another ball. Of course, the SEC is going to get jumbled up so much in the next couple of years for the simple fact that Oklahoma and Texas are coming in, and they're good in so many different sports. But <laughs> what the Sooners are going to do in softball is going to be crazy to the mm -hmm. conference. For uh, sure. <laughs> they are, <laughs> they are the, uh, the gold standard in softball, and they're going to be entering a league where it's, uh, there's a lot of great teams in it. Mm -hmm. So next pitch. And this one is in for a strike, so three and one to count. As many times as we've seen great Bama, Oklahoma uh, softball games, that's going to be a regular. And swing through on that one did Cartron to even the count at three and two. Make him send looks and deals, and this one is rocketed into left field. And holding up at first base is Cartron. So the Lions get one on first base. And coming up to bat now will be Gracie Benton. So no outs here. Top of the third inning for the Lions. Make him some delivers and swing through on that one. Make him since had good placement today, Bass. It's mm -hmm. just uh, the <laughs> what she's facing is uh, <laughs> is murderous. Mm -hmm. It definitely is. Next pitch, and that one's out for a ball. One and one the count. One one pitch, and that one's in for a strike. Beautiful placement there by Makemson to deliver that strike. So one and two the count here on no outs. Runner on first base. And that one's rocketed to third. The throw in time to second, but will not get the runner for first so one out here does hit and guess what they're going to take off and there's the mind games <laughs> my goodness Carton advances to second base so got to keep your eye up at all times Sarah Beth Brake coming up to bat 
former Gardendale Rocket. First pitch. And nice placement by Makemson. Yeah, Bass Makemson's done everything that she could probably ask for her to do in this situation. She's had good placements, mm -hmm. thrown some good balls. It's just that, uh, and that's a good, another good pitch right there. So 0 and 2 count. So the 0 2, and that one's going to be fouled away over to the other field. And Bass Syac tournament going on this week up at uh, Memorial Park up in Jasper. Yeah, they uh, got some teams down from, I think, as far as Ohio, they said. Mm hmm. Of course, some in state teams like uh, Stillman and Miles here from inside the state. Owen 2 remains the count. The 0 2. And that one's going to be rocketed for another foul. And we'll have a little discussion between Makemson and P catcher Megan Caro. So another 0 and 2 upcoming deals. And once again, another foul and uh, the foul onslaught continues. One out here in the top of the third. Runner on second base for Wallace State. And this one's fouled straight on back. Had about five fouls, haven't we? Yeah. You gotta think. She's probably getting tired, getting yeah. aggravated about these uh, these fouls. Well, that's that's good psychology from a batter. The longer that goes on, the better it is for you. And there's your first ball from Makinson. So the longer you can battle and stay ahead, you not only wear out the pitcher, you can continue to frustrate them. Here comes the one-two. And that one's gonna be sent into left field once again. Batter will hold up at third base. That's Benton. And they're gonna play a double steal. And getting in will be Benton. Meanwhile, break has advanced to second. So now a five to nothing lead by the Wallace State Lions. Mind up games, Brian, that's all they're doing. Mm -hmm. Mind games. And up to bat, the pitcher Bailey Hall. Yep, those mind games, uh You've got to be really on top of your game because with the speed and hitting of Wallace State, they will play a lot of them and they will tend to win in those particular situations. Make them send looks and deals and hate. Bailey's going to send this out to center field, getting his Santana Clark and then tagging up. Will be the runner break as she will be on third now. And up to bat, we're just going to stay with Summit and Christian as Gracie Ashley's now up to bat. As I mentioned earlier on, Ashley with a 369 batting average, she is second in the conference, excuse me, third in the conference in triples with two. If she gets a triple here, that's going to quicken the blood. First pitch, and that's going to be knocked into center field. RBI hit by Ashley and coming in was break. 
Riley Moody now up to bat with two outs here in the top of the third. It's six to nothing, Wallace State. First pitch, and off is Ashley, and the pitch squirted away, and she's going to advance to third base. So now, Ashley on third base. Moody's job just got a whole lot easier, as everybody in the infield is going to be watching for Ashley. Next pitch, and that's going to even the count at one and one. one count and this one is rocketed out into left field which has been the favorable spot for the Lions today. Ashley's going to come in and score so another RBI hit and it's seven to nothing Wallace State. Boy they are working out left field. They are for sure. It's been nothing but left field here for the past couple couple hits here. It's been perfect drops. Mm -hmm. I mean right into shallow right field where it's just you can't get it. And up a bat now, Frame, and oh, Clark cannot get that. Frame's going to be on second, and here comes Moody in, and they're looking for inside the park home run, and that does inside the park home run, a two-run shot by Frame. Nine to nothing, Wallace State on top. Just like that, Bass. Mm. frame the top hitter in the conference delivers a good one now up to bat Harbor Niblet and they're going to say strike on that one so 0 and 1 to start off with next pitch and this one is almost into that familiar spot there in shallow left field but it goes foul instead so 0 and 2 the count okay you almost want to paint a bullseye <laughs> right there mm -hmm. behind uh, Katie Puckett about 20 feet behind her they've all been dropping right there and look there it is right there, there again. again. And now, Niblet's now on base, coming up to bat. Leanna Carty. Two outs here in the top of the third inning. The Wallace State line's up 9 to nothing. Almost want to start giving them scores for how much of the bullseye, you mm -hmm. know. <laughs> And they took off on that one, but it's going to be a foul ball. Cardi was ready to pick up some extra bases. Can't take away anything from Wallace Estates base running. I mean, they are very effective. Oh, and one pitch from Makemson. And this one's going to be shot straight up. Will they be able to get to it in time? They do. So Sidney Borden corrals in the third out, but not before Wallace State does enough damage to lead 9 to nothing. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, everybody, to uh, Bevel State Softball, where the Bears are down 9 to nothing, heading here into the bottom of the third inning. Up to bat first, Kaylee Robinson for the Bears, facing off against Bailey Hall. Bass, she's only given up one hit on the day and has four strikeouts, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's been tough going for the Bevel State offense. First pitch. And that's going to be in for a strike. Hall has really been finding her spots today, and that and that change-up sinker that we've seen has just been, I mean, a nightmare. Next pitch. And that one's going to be fouled straight back. She so definitely has been playing a really good game today. Mm -hmm. So Robinson with an 0-2 count here at her at-bat. Next pitch, and that one's going to be high in the zone. Wanted to try to make her chase, but Robinson held up for a 1-2 count. Next pitch, and swung through on that one for strikeout number five for Bailey Hall. One out here, bottom of the third inning. Up to bat now, Sidney Borden. Second base for the Bevel State Bears. The first pitch, and that one's high in the zone from Hall. That'll be a ball. One and zero pitch, and this one hit, <laughs> hit the <laughs> Macon Caro in the face mask. Umpire checks her out and says, "Hey, you're okay." Oh, excuse me, that wasn't Macon Caro. Uh, that is uh, <laughs> Jessica Ede for Wall State. Her fame, <laughs> her teammates are making fun of her. <laughs> Definitely nailed her right in the face. Yep. Is your head okay? Well, that's why you wear those big old oh, masks. Yeah. Next pitch, and swung through on that one. There is that absolutely filthy change-up sinker for one and two. And the one and two, and there is strikeout number six for Bailey Hall. Coming up to bat now, top of the order. It is Santana Clark, the Carbon Hill Bulldog, to face an in-area rival in Bailey Hall from Summit Christian. First pitch. And that is going to be a strike. Of course, I'm sure you remember Bass, and I'm so glad to see so many pitchers wearing the mask themselves. Mm -hmm. Ashley Swindle, when she was at Auburn, got shotgunned mm, yep. uh, during the uh, NCAA playoffs. And that small little hit goes over. Santana is safe. So Santana reaches on base and let's see if those wheels are going to be operating for Santana as we mentioned Santana leads the conference and steals at 34 let's see if she's going to pick up 35 as Catherine Hickey now is up to bat we got her number identified earlier on so this is Catherine Hickey with Santana Clark on base and uh, the Lions had better watch out and there goes Clark and she is going, and she is in with a stolen base. So number 35 on the season for Santana Clark as she continues to lead the conference in steals. And that was a ball. So here comes the 1-0 and from Hall. And swinging through on that one is Hickey. Count is one and one. Five, five, five. 
next pitch and that one's going to be high and outside they're trying to hold up and watch for Clark over on second base Here comes the 2-1, and that one's going to be down and outside, and they are watching <laughs> Santana Clark with a very weathered eye. It's 3-1 the count. It's going to be interesting here because Bailey Hall only six walks on the entire year. Let's see with a 3-1 count, and swinging through on that one is Hickey to even the count at, or excuse me, fill the count up at three and two. So two outs here. Santana Clark on second base. Here it comes and this is going to keep it alive because it's going to be a foul ball. Hit the Bevel State dugout. Next pitch, and this is sent to Hall. Hall's going to throw her to first, and she gets out of the inning without any danger. Heading to the top of the fourth, Lions State, uh, Wallace State Lions on top, 9 to nothing. We'll be right back. Here we are in the top of the fourth inning. Wallace State Lions on top of the Bevel State Bears, nine to nothing. Caitlin Makemson, the Oakman Wildcat, to face Marty Cartron, Maddie Cartron, the conference's leader in home runs at nine. First pitch, and Cartron is up, going to add number ten. That and there it goes. Home run. Yep. Home run number 10 for Maddie Cartron. And the Wallace State Lions are now up 10 to nothing as she's going to dance her way to home plate. She's congratulated by Katie Oliver, one of the assistant coaches from for Wallace State. She's a former all stater herself some summon the Christian went over to Jacksonville State did a great job over there as a player and then decided she wanted to do some assistant coaching over there and now she's with the Wallace State Lions there to congratulate up to bat now Gracie Benton for Wallace State making some source pitch and this is going to be sent into shallow right field and it is tracked down for the first out Great job running that down by Kaylee Robinson. Now up to bat, Sarah Beth Brake for the Lions. One out here and the top of the fourth inning. First pitch. Brake's going to send this straight up. Underneath it to grab it. Good job, Brentley Champion, for the second out. Bailey Hall now taking her cuts at home plate. Two outs here, nobody on base. And 
behind the first pitch. And this is sent straight back from Hall for a strike. Next pitch. And this is going to be sent out into the outfield. Clark cannot get it, and it is going to be dropped for a hit. So a single by Hall. And we're just going to stay with Summoning Christian here, as next up is Gracie Ashley. And I think Coach Daughtry is going to ask for a courtesy runner. And that is indeed the case. Brooke Nash. Not too far away, Mortimer Jordan. Is going to be doing the courtesy running for Bailey Hall as she gets ready to go back out and pitch once again here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Meanwhile, here's Gracie Ashley. Pitch, and that is going to be outside for a ball. Ashley's been producing a bunch today as well as we've seen Bass. The entire lineup has mm -hmm. been contributing for the Lions. Next pitch to Ashley, and that's going to be high in the zone. Remains at a 2-0 count. The 2-0, and that one's going to be high, 3-0 now. Two outs here still for the Lions. Ashley way ahead, 3-0 in the count. She holds up, and she's going to be walking. They're now runners on first and second for Wallace State. Coming up to bat now will be Riley Moody. She's not an area player. She's from Georgia. So First pitch to Moody. And she's going to rocket this one <laughs> into that same old familiar spot. Everybody's going to hold up and load the bases. So two outs here, bases loaded for the Lions. And I do believe that we're going to have a substitute batter. This is going to be Abigail Walters, another Gardendale product. So she's going to have a chance to potentially do a lot more damage here with the bases loaded. Makemson's going to have to keep her head down and uh, pitch her best in a situation like this. Good crowd today. That's the Lions have brought a nice little nice little bunch on their side. First pitch and that one's down in the zone. Wanna know the count. Always have a good crowd when there's nice weather outside. Oh, yeah. I don't imagine the crowds are going to be too plentiful on Saturday. And another one down in the zone. <coughs> Generally not too many spring people get it, want to get out when it's 2-0. and oh, And uh, I think we're going to have a little mound visit. We'll take a 30-second break and we'll be right back.
Looks like we'll be having a pitching change. Uh, coming in will be Anna Lacey, and she'll get her warm up. So we're going to take another break while she does her warm ups, and we'll be right back. And Anna Lacey getting her warm-ups here as Caitlin Makinson uh, has retired for the day. Lacey, of course, had that uh, shutout not too long ago. Uh, really good showing. That was, uh, let me see here, not that, not that long ago. Uh, but she did throw uh, the first shutout of the year for the Bevel State Bears. Product out of Haleyville. She's a lion, so we're just going to stay with the, the lion theme here. Two outs here, Brian, mm -hmm. as the lions are up at bat here. And this is Abigail Waters. The count is 2 and 0 oh as Lacey takes over. Bases are full. The 2 and 0, oh, and that's going to be 3 and 0 oh now. So the three and zero from Lacey, and that's going to be a strike. So three and one the count. Ten nothing lead here for the Lions in the top of the fourth. Two outs, and the count is three and one. And that's going to be a bases loaded walk. So. Coming in for the Lions will be Brooke Nash. Everybody advances one. Score now is 11 to nothing. Two outs still remain on the board. Up to the plate now, Shelby Hobson. She's out of Hillcrest in Tuscaloosa. So another one county over. Mm -hmm. Not too far away. Nope. First pitch, and that one's going to be down in the zone for a ball, one and oh. Not exactly sure where Hillcrest is. I know where Central is, because if you look straight down the street from Bryant Denny, you'll see Central High School. Mm -hmm. I don't know where Hillcrest is, though. Next pitch, and that one's going to be high in the zone, 2 and 0. pitch and that one's fouled away two and one Brian just taking a look across the field here we got the Sumner Christian Eagles the baseball team is up there at the batting yep. cages of course one of our broadcast colleagues Nick Norris assistant coach for them he writes us up some dialogue as that one sent away for a foul on the Sumner Christian Eagles exploits 
that they're working on. I think that might be Coach Blair that we're seeing out there in between center and right field watching the action here. Taking a look at some of how some of his old uh, summoning Christian students are doing out here. He's got one on third base right now uh, as Lacey deals and that one's going to be fouled off. Eleven to one here. Excuse me, eleven to nothing here in the top of the fourth inning. Wallace State at bat and leading. The two-two pitch and this one is sent in to shortstop and is collected for the third out. Wallace State leads eleven to nothing. Bevel State Bears heading to the bottom of the fourth inning. We'll be right back. Bottom of the fourth inning here, the Wallace State Lions on top of the Bevel State Bears, 11 to nothing. Bailey Hall, the summoning Christian Eagle, back in the circle. She will be facing off Katie Puckett here to start off with. Hall, six strikeouts, just allowed two hits thus far in the shutout. And she has been doing a good job, Bass. She has indeed been pretty perfect here in this game so far in this very first game. Coach Daughtry talking to the umpire. I'm guessing he's going to uh, sub in uh, some of the uh, batters that he had uh, coming out for courtesy. Or he might just be in certain other players to get them some action. Either that or he's putting in his order for <laughs> pizza or McDonald's or something here in between the games. But uh, I'm thinking uh, here comes Coach Jonathan Lay to go over, thing in, er, over everything in the lineup, so I, I don't think it's a food order. I think it's a lineup <laughs> change. So up first will be Katie Puckett, and she will be followed by Mackenzie Kirby. Kirby, along with Santana Clark, has been the two offensive produ producers for the Bears thus far. And it looks like the discussion is finally over. So Hall's ready. Everybody seems to be ready now. And we're ready to get underway. First pitch from Hall. And the 
because she looked like she might have been going for that absolutely disastrous mm -hmm. uh, change up sinker, but I think she held off on it. One another the count. And swinging through on that one is Puckett. One and one the count. The one one. And swing through again. Did Puckett. The one and two now the count. The one two. And that one's high. Two and two now the count. There's the pitch. That one's extremely high. Three and two now, full count. You're almost wondering her best that she's luring her into that that change up sinker. Mm -hmm. mm, that one's cut away. So another full count pitch. And this one is sent into right field and puck it will be on base with a single. Now if there's another opportunity for some offense, here's your top hitter, Mackenzie Kirby, mm -hmm. heading up the plate. She does have a hit on the day. Ninth in the conference in batting average at 456. She's seventh in doubles with eight. All checks are signals and delivers. And oh my goodness, wow. there it went. Mm -hmm. And she chased it and oof. Poor Kirby's like, I tried. <laughs> Next pitch. And that one is going to get away. Wild pitch there and Puckett will smartly advance to second. So the Bubble State Bears with a runner in scoring position. One and one the count. And the pitch. And just taking a little cut at that one to try to keep it alive. One and two. All looks and pitches. And that one's going to be high. It's going to be two and two the count. Yeah, if I was my buddy Russell Moore, the uh, SID up at Wallace State, I'd nickname that pitch Mystify. <laughs> two, two, and there we are still battling two and two the count. So another 2-2. Two -two. And this one is bonked off of the third baseman. A fielding error by the Lions. And Bevel State Bears with no outs has runners on the corners, first and third. And they are going to send in a courtesy runner, Randy Johnson from nearby Fayette to courtesy run for Kirby. Up to bat now, Savannah Neely. She's got a chance to get the Bevel State Bears on the board. the first pitch to Neely and that one's going to be high 1-0 the count there's been a time in this game for Bailey Hall to feel some pressure this is it wow, wow. 
Next pitch. And that one's going to be high also, 2-0. and oh. And looks like we're going to have a circle visit. We're going to take a 30-second break, and we'll be right back. So the meeting in the circle for the Lions is now over with. Back to action here. Savannah Neely has runners on the corner, first and third. She's up in the count, 2-0, and oh, facing off against Hall here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Hall looks and delivers, and that one's high, so 3-0 and oh now. The three and zero, oh. and that's called strike. Three and one. Three and one pitch, and and Neely is going to be walking. So first walk of the game, just the seventh of the year. Brentley champion now up to bat with a golden opportunity. No outs here and the base is loaded for Bevel State. This could be a big opportunity for mm -hmm. Bevel here to get on the board. First pitch and swinging three on that one is champion. So the scenario is, does Bevel get some runs and some offense finally across the plate? Or can Hall and her defense hold them off for all three bats, and Champion swung through on that one, so Hall's already up 0-2. Oh Next pitch, and that one's fouled straight off behind us. Remains 0-2. Oh Another 0-2, and this one sent straight into shallow right field. Oh, and the collision. And it looks like the Bears have played it a run. So coming in to score is Puckett. So Neely drives in Bears' first one. And the next pitch. Seems like actually it's going to be an out. Huh. They recorded an out. Yep. Right now it's 11 to, it's 1. 11 to 1. So Neely did produce, drove in a run. And we have a 2-0 and o count here. Up to bat now, Megan Caro, the catcher. And the pitch. And that was straight in for a strike. 2-1 and one now the count. The pitch. And swinging through on that one is Caro that evens the count at two and two. Here's the two two. And another strikeout by Hall, number seven on the day. Rear two outs here. Coming to the plate now, Kaylee Robinson. Takes her cuts. Runners on second and third. Bevel State 
has played at one run here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Pitch from Hall, and this is sent over to shortstop. And, oh, my goodness, throwing error mm. by Wallace State. And that will give Johnson in. So it's now 11-2. to two. The Bears played another one on an error. Now runners back at the corner. Bevel has executed to get at least mm -hmm. two on the board so far, but Sydney still got a long uh, road to climb. Mm -hmm. Sydney Borden now up to bat, and she fouls away her first. Yeah, it's still it's still a nine nine uh, run lead by Wallace State. As they're still firmly holding on top of a very comfortable lead. The 0 1, and that's going to be in for a strike. Fastball. So an 0 2 pitch on the way, and that one's going to be high in the zone. One and two the count. Two outs, 11 to two lead for Wallace State. The one two pitch upcoming. And that one's a high also, two and two. Hall looks and delivers, and this one's going to be fouled away. We'll just stay at two and two. Hey, you got right here, Bo? Borden back in the box, awaiting the two-two. Here it comes. <laughs> Man, that one is just barely missed, Borden. Three and two. That was close, and yeah. I mean close. She felt the wind on that one. Mm -hmm. Full count with two outs here in the bottom of the fourth. And another foul away as Borden continues to battle. We're just having a battle over here in mm -hmm. something. Next pitch. Once again, can the battle continues as another foul ball. We got some Roos fans out there in the outfield, don't we, Bass? Mm -hmm, we do. Sitting up up the hill. Another full count pitch, and this is going to go in for a ball, so another walk. And loads the bases for the Bears. And how about stepping up to the plate? Santana, Santana Clark. Clark. Now she does have a hit and a stolen base on the day. So a chance for Santana Clark to produce some more hey, runs. Carbon Hill Bulldog facing against the Summoning Christian Eagle and a golden opportunity to plate some more runs for the Bears here. Bottom of the fourth inning, it's two outs, and bases loaded. First pitch, and there it is once again. I'm still gonna call it the Mystify. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I'm, I'm just, uh, that, that's the nickname of that pitch because that's what it does, it mystifies. 0-1, oh, and, and this one is fouled back. 0-2 oh now the count. Mm -hmm. 
Paul looks and delivers, and that one's high in the zone. One and two. Hall with bases loaded. We'll be throwing the one two. And tip foul as Clark continues to battle. two pitch and there it is mystify third out here as we're heading to the top of the fifth it's 11 to 2 Welcome back, everybody. 11-2, to two, Wallace State on top, heading to the top of the fifth inning. And Lacey in the circle, and she will be facing a very close by uh, Lauren Deal from corner. I covered corner a lot of years while at the Eagle. I actually brought them in when I was sports writer at the Eagle. They didn't have any coverage after the Birmingham News decided to drop them out of the coverage area. So, Corner has always traditionally been a very good softball team and produced a lot of great players. And we're going to catch a deal here. Is she's going to go against Lacey, her first cuts of the game. And here's the first pitch. And that's going to be high from Lacey, one and the count. Next pitch, and that one's also going to be high in the zone. Two and zero, the count. The corner seems to they, they have an overall really good sports program. I mean, uh, it's next pitch on this one is fouled straight back. Two and one. Uh, the girls' basketball team has struggled the past couple of years, but you look at football. You know, you look at volleyball. Uh, you look at boys basketball, mm -hmm. which has traditionally always been strong under Coach Connor. Uh, then you look at their softball, their baseball. They even have a good wrestling program. And this one is fouled once again by Dill. Two and two the count. The 2-2 two -two from Lacey, and this one is sent out into the outfield. Who's going to get under it? It is secured by Neely for the first out. <laughs> Bailey Tatum from Bob Jones and Madison. If I'm not mistaken, isn't that the largest school in the entire state? Bob uh, Jones? If it's not, it's definitely very close. Yep. First pitch in for a strike from Lacey. I want to say that that's, that was the, I think it's the largest. They, they overtook Hoover a few years back. They 0-1. And laid down on a bunt, and they're saying that's going to be a foul ball. Hmm. 
<laughs> of course, I also have to laugh because when I found out the largest school in the state's 2,000, and uh, where I graduated from high school with back in my day was 4,000. We were just a mid-range school. <laughs> I have to laugh. Sorry. <laughs> and the pitch in there is going to be a ball. See, I, I, I had a... Uh... I want to say it was 114 in my graduation class at Cordova back in 2019. We had, in 1992, we had 963. Ooh. So, <laughs> next pitch. And that one's tipped for a foul. One and two is going to remain the count. Yeah, uh, IMG Academy down in Miami. I'm sure you've heard of that. Oh, yeah, there are I have. 10,000 students, wow. uh, you know. <laughs> So when you see 2,000, you're just kind of like, really? Yeah. <laughs> Next pitch, and Lacey's going to, I don't know if an NBA center could have hit that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty familiar with IMG Academy. It has a really, really, really good sports program down Well, there. you know, when you got 10,000 students, oh, you yeah. can pick out the athletes, you know, <laughs> so... Um, and plus, a lot of those just go to IMG mm -hmm. to play sports. So, uh, you know, making the team at a IMG Academy, regardless of what it is, uh, is uh, quite an accomplishment mm -hmm. uh, to be able to actually play for IMG Academy. You're almost sure that you're going to go to, to college somewhere. Oh, yeah. Next pitch. And this one's going to be sent into the outfield. Clark's going to... Haul it down, but with a stand-up second, Bailey Tatum reaches. Amity Cooper from Lincoln is now up to bat. One out here and runner on second base in scoring position. First pitch, and that's going to be in for a strike. Oh, and won the count. Yeah, it's like Hoover, like Bob Jones, you know, the, when you've got a large student body and you can draw from that to pick out your players, usually you're pretty good. Mm -hmm. Unless you've just got inept coaching. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you're paying now, if you've got all those students and you're paying a whole lot of money, normally you're not going to have any coaching. You know, Brian, I was just thinking, you talked about 900 students in your graduation class. How did they even do that? We went down to the uh, Jacksonville Civic Center. Oh, and that one sent out into the outfield. And, oh, no, nearly dropped the ball. Runners will advance to second and third base. I bet that was a long graduation. It was four hours. Yeah. <laughs> just for the students only. Wow. And we were mid-range. Uh, mm -hmm. Rains High School, uh, which has 8,000, the largest in wow. Jacksonville. Uh, they they had the longest. I think their graduating classes are usually right around 1,800. Mm. So, yeah. But you never have... Uh, you never have graduations at the school. You just you can't hold them. They always hold them at civic centers or coliseum or something like that. I could imagine sitting through four hours or something, something like yeah. that. And the pitch, and that's going to be fouled away on one. Well, generally. One thing that I've noticed in between Alabama and Florida schools is the guest te speakers only tend to be about six or seven minutes in the Florida mm -hmm. schools. If, you, if you've got a graduating class of, of 98, you can generally have a guest speaker that will stand up there and talk for a little while. But hmm. Oh, and that one's sent into shallow outfield. Clark, a beautiful range on that. As she will track it down, but it's going to be a sacrifice fly and get a run in as Tatum scores for the Lions. 
now 12 to 2 with two outs. Here in the top of the fifth. Bailey Hall is now getting coming in to get her cuts. And the first pitch, and that one's going to be outside. 1 0 the count. Runner on third base for Wallace State. <coughs> She gets ready. Pitch. Next pitch, and this one's going to be fouled away to even the count at one and one. Brian, I saw they're finally starting to work on the huddle house in Jasper. Oh, it took him long <laughs> enough. <laughs> and that one's going to be a high one from Lacey. Two and one the count. It seems like that thing's been in construction. It, I think it started at the same time that the Applebee's started. Mm -hmm, but did. the Applebee's took like seven months, mm -hmm. and Huddle House has been going for almost three years. And that one's fouled away. It's going to even the count at two and two. And what's nice is it's right there close to the radio station. Mm -hmm. So we've got more and more stuff that. that's popping up that's not too far away. Now if we can just get like a Buffalo Wild Wings or oh, something, yeah. I'd be happy. Oh, my goodness. Rocketed in. Santana Clark does manage to get it for the third out. Wallace State on top heading into the bottom of the fifth inning, 12-2 to two over the Bevel State Bears. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Bottom of the 12th inning. Wallace State on top of the Bevel State Bears, 12 to 2. Catherine Hickey will have her chance to go up against Bailey Hall. She will be followed by Puckett. Bears will look to try to stave off an early end to this game. First pitch from Hall. And that's going to be down in the zone for a ball. Brian, we were just talking about Buffalo Wild Wings, if we could get Jasper. Crazy enough, I've only been there one time, and it was for my birthday. Wow. But, I, man, I miss it. I need to go back sometime. Uh, that one is swung through for a strike, even as the count one and one. I've been up to the one in Coleman quite a few times, and then when we usually go to Gatlinburg, there's one in Sevierville right mm -hmm. close to our hotel. We go to that one a bunch. Mm -hmm. Next pitch, and that one's going to be called for a strike. So one and two the count. Yeah, that one in Sevierville, I love it because we've got a TGI Fridays, a Buffalo Wine Wings, and an Applebee's, oh, man. and you don't even have to get into the main road. Oh, wow. It's all right there. Next pitch, and this is going to be sent out to the outfield. So Neely, excuse me, Hickey is going to reach and be on base. First at bat and doing good. So here comes Puckett. And if Puckett can land her on base, Mackenzie Kirby with her hitting power and her ability could get us some runs here and make sure this doesn't go to an early ending. First pitch from Hall, and that's in for a strike. Over one the count. Next.
next pitch. And they're going to call that a ball. So it evens the count at one and one. Next pitch. Yeah, whew, that was rocketed, but it just stays right outside of the foul line. That would have picked up some extra bases. It certainly would. Nevertheless, one and two count. Puckett's continuing to battling. One and two still to count. No outs here and the one and two. And that one's going to be outside for a ball. Evens the count at two and two. pitch full count now three and two we won't be carrying the game tomorrow but over at Dora Jasper Vikings and the Dora Bulldogs we do in battle baseball and that one slammed up into foul territory nobody can get that so the Vikings and the Bulldogs gonna do some baseball battling tomorrow meanwhile Bass and Brett will be hand, heading down to Birmingham to go watch some SmackDown for the WWE. Yeah, they haven't been in a while. <coughs> they stopped doing it ever since they uh, have been renovating the new M, uh, BJCC. And the strikeout by Hall, number eight. Sits down Puckett and up to bat. Here comes Kirby. First pitch to her, and they're going to call that a strike. Oh, and won the count. Next pitch, and that's going to be outside, or excuse me, inside. One and one the count. Once again inside, they're going to try to throw down to first, but he's already back. We had Kirby on not too long ago. She's mm -hmm. a jokester. Pretty funny. Said Megan Caro's pretty funny along with her as well. Might have to have the both of them on at the same time. And swinging through on that one as Kirby evens account at two and two. What we need is a WJLX comedy show. We do. We do. That's what we need. You know who we need to have officiate it? Heath Burns, because <laughs> he, he tells some good ones. Next pitch, and slam that one did Kirby, and it's tracked down for the second out. So, Pebble State most likely down to their last at-bat, unless Savannah Naley can get some magic working and keep this game going. And talking about Heath Burns, you and Brent not too long ago just interviewed him. Yep. Very happy to be home in the spot that, quite frankly, he should have been at a long time ago. We won't go into that, but <laughs> happy to see Coach Burns at Jasper finally, where he's going to build some champions. And on the steal, Hickey. And this time they get her on the second lunge. So... That should be it, looking for the indications. And it looks like that is going to end it here. Yep, that will end it. So Bass, 12-2 uh, to two win here is the final for the Wallace State Lions as they're going to head into game two here in just a little bit. Uh, you know... <laughs> 
Number two team in the nation, Bevel did get some offense rolling, uh, but a 12-2 five-inning uh, final here. Uh, did have some uh, scores for the Bears. We'll have everything uh, wrapped up and uh, posted on WJLX. But as always, a, a great pleasure to be out here uh, on such a wonderful day and broadcasting mm -hmm. the Bears with you, buddy. It is, it is. And like I, like I said last week, I'm uh, happy to finally be in softball season because <laughs> it's uh, – just means we're getting one step closer to football season. Yep. Boy, if we could just go from football to softball, I mean, hey, I'd hey, be a happy I'd, man. I'd love, but, it. I'd love yeah. that. All righty. Well, for Sebastian Black, uh, this is Brian Hale. We will see you again, once again, for some more Bevel State softball. So long, everybody.